So, Mr. Speaker, if you are going to look to what has happened in the past with other countries who have left the Privy Council, then clearly the weight of history is that if we leave, we should establish our own court. Let's, Mr. Mr. Speaker, there's a, there's, a, there's a point to be made. There is a point to be made. And the question is whether or not a simple majority or a two-thirds majority can establish an appellate court that is of such a nature that it meets the existing constitutional requirement of entrenching and protecting the court that is being established. That is a question that these bills, in my mind and in many other persons who are far more knowledgeable on the legal justice system than I have, have raised questions. There is a principle, Mr. Speaker, that these bills do not address. It is the principle of legal certainty. Listen, legal certainty. The question is, Mr. Speaker, if we establish, by virtue of these bills, a final appellate court attached to our existing Court of Appeal and pretend that we are giving them the same level of protection as our Supreme Court and our final court, our Court of Appeal here. But yet, the court that these judges will be attached to have no similar protection in the other jurisdictions. My friend, we have said we are not defending that. If we leave there, which is a right guaranteed before our constitution, before our constitution, if we leave that, then we must establish a court that when it comes to review the lower courts, there is no question of its certainty. When you establish a court here and that court goes to review a decision of the appeals court, there must be no question as to whether or not that court was rightfully established. Right now, Mr. Speaker, these bills don't answer that. And I am certain, as it has been said before, that were these bills to go through, can you imagine that the appellate court could be brought before our constitutional court as to whether or not that court was rightfully established? Mr. Speaker, nonsense? You say nonsense? Mr. Speaker, we have a precedence in Jamaica. This government established the gun court, established it on similar platform. On similar platform, it was taken to court and it was ruled that it was unconstitutional how it was established. Mr. Speaker, don't, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I think that we need to take a second look. Bobby, shut up. Bobby, shut up. You have no sense of it. You have partial lawyer. Dread because it's dread. Mr. Speaker. Well, Mr. Well, Mr. Well, Speaker. Well, Mr. Speaker. I, I raise these points to say. I raise these points to say that if we are going to establish a final court of appeal, let us do it the correct way. My greatest fear is that we go to establish a court on which there is a political divide. Immediately, the integrity of the court is threatened. I urge the government to take a second look at this. I urge the government. And as I take my feet, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> As I take my seat, Mr. Speaker. As I take my seat, Mr. Speaker. I get the distinct feeling that the 
the drive and the great impetus and energy that is being expended towards achieving this final mission, which is said to complete our independence, that it doesn't really come from the Jamaican people. Because I don't hear anybody on the street bawling that the CCJ will give us justice in Jamaica. I don't hear that. I don't, I don't hear, Mr. Speaker, young people saying that we need the CCJ. We want I don't hear the mothers who want to send their children to school talking about the CCJ. I don't hear the people gathered in the waiting areas in our hospitals asking for CCJ. For CCJ. I think, Mr. Speaker, that this is driven by a group of individuals who want to fulfill some dreams and aspirations that are outdated and out of sync with the dreams and aspirations of the Jamaican people. Young people, regional unity. I think, Mr. Speaker, Socialist. that this is a distraction to the real issues that face this country. I feel, Mr. Speaker, that this is another excursion and expense on the people of Jamaica that will not yield any benefit. I think that the government should reconsider this and spend its time on ensuring that its ministries that are a call on the public's budget do their jobs. I think, Mr. Speaker, you want to know it coming to this? Your founder, Norman Mann, was very clear. He said, he's one of my friends. He said that we have achieved our independence. Mr. Speaker, now is the time that we must, we have achieved our political independence. Now is the time that we must achieve our economic independence. This generation, after that was said almost 50 years ago, still cannot claim that we have achieved our economic independence. Yet, this government is going off on an excursion trying to fulfill a, a dream about political independence. What is that? And what does that mean in the present context? Mr. Speaker, the Jamaica Labour Party is about the economic development of this country. It is through our economic independence that we will truly gain and be able to say that we are politically independent. I said to the people of Jamaica, do not be fooled by these arguments. You are not going to get any more recognition when you step into someone else's country because you have a Caribbean Court of Appeal. You have to solve your economic problems here and now so that when you stand up in the world, you can say Jamaica is a country that has conquered crime. We have high growth. We have good education. That is how you're going to be measured and respected as a politically independent country when you don't have to look to other countries for loans and for aid. That is what the Jamaica Labour Party is about, Mr. Speaker. And as I stand here, Mr. Speaker, I will not let this government put another distraction to the Jamaican people. The Jamaican people want the government to focus on their economic and social development. The CCJ is not a priority at this time. Mr. Speaker, we have presented solid arguments on this side, arguments that are rooted in reason, arguments that are incontrovertible. That side has not contradicted anything that we have said here. We have presented to you, Mr. Speaker, the facts, which is why, Mr. Speaker, we on this side will not support the three bills brought here.
mindset. 